Hey everybody, welcome and thanks for watching. Um, I wanted to share this uh, fun, uh, fun little project that I was doing um, oh, with a with an Arduino servo motor LEDs and just a buzzer here. Um, I wanted to find because I'm working on this project with a friend here that uh, wanted to find this code where you could actually use a, a, a button keypad uh, to to do a combination lock. Now, like I saw a, a bunch of codes online here. And this is the code that I found um, that worked what best for me. Now, obviously, this is not my code. Um, however, I do kind of understand it, but I'll show you. Um, this guy is the one that came up with it. Now, I don't know his name, but um, it's makerprojectsblog.wordpress.com. Um, and I'll leave the link in the description, but um, he, this guy came up with this some genius code here to actually uh, work with a two-button uh, keypad. Um, but basically this website gives you schematics and how to hook everything up here um, and I won't really go into it but like you can go to this link here and, and find everything that you need here to get everything set up now what I did was I actually added, this, added the servo motor because a lot of the videos I, I saw was like punching in the keypad and actually the little correct indicator light would light up which was great and everything and people kept saying well you can add some kind of some kind of motor function to it to make it actually do something. Uh, maybe unlock a secret panel or a secret doorway or something um, to the lock system. So I kind of was interested in that, so this is what I did. So uh, basically, um, here's what I did. Um, I added the servo library up here. Now you can find that actually here in the, uh, where is it? Include library, and down here on the Arduino um, interface, and just include that, and it goes right up here to the top. On the the other line, I kind of um, initialize the position, which is uh, POS, which is starts at zero. The second, uh, the fifth line, or next line down, is um, I put the servo motor in pin nine, digital pin nine, and the next line down, I gave the servo. Uh, a delay which is 15 milliseconds uh, another uh, another person on on the one uh, on one of the videos that I saw he put it at 25 and for some servo motors that's a good sweet spot but I want mine to go a little bit quicker the second one down you just kind of initiate the servo which actually you just put this uh, cap uh, you could put the servo command in there and I just named it to my servo and you can name it whatever you want here but you just create an object for it um, and uh, that's how you do that, and this is where I put the piezo buzzer in. Uh, I put it on pin 12, and just called it piezo buzzer. Um, now, uh, moving down, if you know anything about the void setup, um, this is all his code. So all I did was just add the uh, my servo dot write position. So whenever this happens, whenever you reset the button, like as you saw, I put a reset button on mine, it goes back to position zero. And it always does that when it resets here, just once. Um, so if you know what the void setup is, it just loops once and only works once. Everything else kind of loops continuously. So moving all the way down here, this is the actual magic of my code and uh, in conjunction with his code. Um, this is his code right here. And this is my code that I added down here. Basically, once you do the combination and everything's correct, it goes through the whole sequence here. It starts with the uh, piezo buzzer um, and just uh, kind of turns it on. These are just frequencies right here that I found online as well. It starts the tone for uh, you know two, 250 and 150 milliseconds, then works through the code, blinks the light as you saw in the video, then goes down here to the magic of the servo motor, which is in a for loop, and it just causes the, uh, the, the motor to turn on. Now I position mine start at 5 to 175. Usually in motors, if you have a good servo motor, they're telling me that it's just actually 0 to 180. But some motors you have to kind of test because it doesn't give you the full 180 frequency. So you have to just kind of figure out that sweet spot because if you don't, it can pretty much break and wear down your motor. Um, it'll just, you'll hear the motor just working really hard because it just doesn't, for some reason, allow it go, to go all the way span all the way to that degree. Um, but I noticed on mine, mine was a good sweet spot of 5 
and uh, 175. So that's where it kind of positions itself. Um, so, and then I incremented up 10 increments, and uh, usually in position, you know, position equals position plus one, um, but I just did a 10 to get it to the end result quicker. Um, that's just what I did. And that's it. That's what I did to make everything work. Now, uh, it was pretty easy to, to plug in all the pins here, and I'm not gonna tell you how to do it just for time's sake, but um, if you just either Google or even do a search on YouTube, you can find real simple ways to kind of hook up the electronic components to the actual board here. Um, and uh, yeah, it was for the price of uh, very low money. Now the servo motor I actually bought from Fry's, if you're interested, is just basically a, a Metal Gear digital. And the actual model number is LS-009AF, as in Frank. You can also buy it on eBay for cheap. Um, but if you're, you know, antsy like I was, I just hopped on down the fries and just picked it up here. And the piezo motor was uh, a couple bucks. It was a piece of crap, <laughs> but it was for clearance. Same at fries, but I needed. I wanted to put something in there to indicate that the actual combination code was correct. And as you can tell, the sound was just awful. But Hopefully in later videos I'll figure out how to work this piezo speaker to make it like actually do the right frequencies and actually sound great or might even just buy a better piezo speaker or even just a, a better speaker, speaker in general. But um, anyway, and oh, the little white stuff at the bottom of the uh, servo motor, that was actually like, uh, it was just flopping all over the place when it was working so I needed a little bit of weight to it so I bought these little plastic beads you can melt down and uh, boiling water and you can actually mold things out of it so I just uh, that's what that was if you're curious on that but yeah if you have any questions leave them down in the comments uh, you don't really have to subscribe because this was just more of a fun video um, if you like it then like it uh, that'd be awesome uh, show me that uh, you're interested in the same things I like and you're just uh, you're curious George like I am but anyway if I hope you like the video and uh, yeah Thanks for watching.